My name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on the Ionic Bond. In this video we're going to look at obviously the Ionic Bond and we're going to look at the dot cross diagrams involved. And we're also going to look at some electron configurations as well of atoms and ions. Uh, the crucial equations as well, we'll have to go through them, half equations and ionic equations and also go through the physical properties. So you might be thinking well the Ionic Bond you know, I've done this at GCSE before, what's the problem, how difficult can it be? And the answer is it's not really that difficult, but this video is really going to go through to make sure that your answers are absolutely squeaky clean in the exam uh, and that you can score maximum marks by writing the correct terminology and making sure that your equations are absolutely spot on. So we're going to start by looking at the uh, dot cross diagram of an ionic bond. So you can see here that we've got two atoms here. We've got sodium and chlorine, which is a very common ionic compound, sodium atom and chlorine atom. The sodium atom has the electron configuration of two electrons in the middle, eight in the next shell and one in the outer shell. So it's in group one. Now the A-level electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Uh, this is chlorine, you can see we've got two in the middle, eight in the next shell and seven in the outer shell. It's in group seven. So group seven uh, will have seven electrons in the outer shell and it has this configuration here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5. Now, an ionic bond occurs when an atom wants to try and get a stable configuration, stable electron configuration. So to do that, um, a metal atom can lose one electron and donate that to the chlorine atom so it has a full shell of electrons. Now, the group number really depends on uh, the type of ions that you form. So, for example, all group one uh, elements form one plus ions. Uh, this is because they lose their outer electron and what's left behind is a positive charge. Group 2s form plus 2s, group 3s generally form plus 3s but there's a few elements further down which uh, don't quite follow that rule but you don't need to worry about them thankfully. Uh, group 4s are plus or minus 4, um, they've got no preference whether they lose or gain 4 electrons because they're halfway in between. Uh, group 5s though, they form minus 3 ions and this is because they uh, it's easier for group five elements to um, gain three electrons uh, to get full shell than to lose the five that they already have. So they form minus three ions. Remember the electrons negatively charged. So if you gain electrons that are negatively charged, the overall ion that's left behind, uh, that is formed, sorry, is going to be negative as well. Group sixes form minus two ions and group sevens form minus one ions. So looking at this then, um, you can see sodium in group one has one electron in its outer shell. So it's gonna form a one plus charge. Now what it does is it gets rid of this outer electron here, so we'll get rid of that blue dot there. Um, we're going to transfer it across over to here onto the chlorine, so it gives up that electron there. So what we form is a charge, and how we represent this in chemistry is we draw a dot cross and we put a square bracket around it, uh, and the sodium forms a plus charge. Chlorine has gained the electron that came from sodium, so we put a square bracket around there, and we put a minus charge on there. Now, the actual ionic bond is not the actual transfer of electrons. The bond is actually the attractive force of the ions that have been produced as a result of the transfer of electrons. So sodium is positively charged and chlorine is negatively charged. Now, the words we're looking for in the exam is an electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. So these are the words that you need to use to describe an ionic bond. And they form giant ionic structures like this, huge cubic structures where each ion, each oppositely charged ion can effectively, in some cases like sodium chloride in particular, can surround themselves by six other oppositely charged ions. One at the top, one at the bottom, one at that side and one at that side. So very, very, very stable, lots of electrostatic forces. And we'll come on to the um, physical properties in a minute and how that actually comes into play. So we'll just go through the electron configuration of these now for the ion. Now you can see here that we've lost the electron from sodium. So the electron configuration here is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. So the 3s1 goes because we've lost it from the outer shell. Uh, the chlorine one has gained the electron. It's now negatively charged. So this is going to be uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. 3p6. Okay, so that's got a full shell, very stable configuration. 
Um, so the atom is nice and stable, the ion is stable. Okay, so we need to obviously write equations here. We need to know what's actually going on. Now this can be a little bit tricky. Um, Got to make sure that you're writing them correctly. So we'll start with the um, sodium first. Now we started with sodium element, which is Na, and the sodium is going to form uh, Na plus, uh, because that's the ion that we formed. And we're also going to produce an electron as well, because the electron has effectively been removed. Now the definition of ionization is that the elements are all in the gaseous state. Um, and when you do ionization topic uh, later on in A-level, um, you'll see the actual definition there. But I'm going to put our uh, symbols on here as well, our state symbols. So that's going to be gas, and that's going to be gas. So all elements in the gaseous state. Okay, so um, the next one is chlorine. Now chlorine goes around, this is the tricky bit, chlorine always goes around as a pair. Uh, it doesn't go around on its own. So when we're writing out chlorine, although we've drawn a dot cross that just shows one chlorine, we have to write Cl2. Uh, and this is going to form... Cl minus, because that's the ions we've made. Now you can see this isn't balanced, because we had two chlorines here and one there. So we need to put a two in front of there to make sure that's balanced. Um, and as a result, this accepts an electron. But if we've got Cl2, uh, each atom is going to accept an electron each. So we need two electrons to be accepted. So we're going to put that there, plus two electrons. There you go. And again, all of this is in the gaseous state. So put gas and gas there. Okay, so there's our um, half equations. These are half equations because they only show us what's happening to one uh, element. We can combine these though to form what we call an ionic equation. And to do this, it's a little bit like a simultaneous equation. Um, what we have to do is just multiply uh, the top row here by two. Now the reason why we have to multiply it by two is because you can see we've got one electron here, we've got two electrons here. Now when we're writing an ionic equation from two half equations, we have to make sure that the electrons equal the same or that are balanced. And so the way we should do this is multiplying that top one by two. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to times that one by two. And what that means is because if we multiply all of this by two, we get two Na, two Na plus and two electrons. We can see here the electrons now balance on both top and bottom equations and we can cancel them out. And an ionic equation has no electrons in it, so you must get rid of your electrons. So the ionic equation for this is, and we'll do this in blue, sodium, but we've got two lots of Na, which is over here. And we're going to add Cl2, because that's on the left-hand side. So everything on the left-hand side of the equation is drawn down, to, down here. Uh, and that's going to form two lots of Na+. plus plus two lots of Cl minus. Oh, if I could write it properly. So two lots of Cl minus, there you go. And so there is our ionic equation. Okay, so it's showing our ions. And um, the last thing as well is to go through physical properties. Now this is quite common in the exam um, to link structure and bonding with the actual property of the chemical. That's, what's, that's what chemistry is all about after all. So we're going to look at temperature first uh, or melting and boiling points. So um, these things actually have very, very high melting points. Um, they have very strong electrostatic forces between oppositely charged ions. They're the words that you need to use. Um, and so because they've got strong forces, it means that, uh, and there's a lot of them, they form giant ionic structures that they have high melting points. So we're just going to add that over there. And so we'll write it in blue as well. So it's got high melting points, high MP. Okay. Um, solubility, these things are um, very soluble. They dissolve readily in water. Um, so, um, and that's because they're, they're charged. This whole thing is charged. So water can, or polar solvent, should we say, can actually pull these charges apart and so they're relatively soluble. So we're gonna put on there, um, dissolve well. Or you can say soluble. Uh, and the last thing is conductivity of electricity. Um, ionic compounds uh, do conduct electricity, but only under certain circumstances. So we'll put conduct on there. Okay, and they conduct uh, when they're molten or when they're in solution. So we'll put that on there. So when they're molten or when they're in solution or dissolved in something. And the reason why is because for these things to conduct, for anything to conduct, it must either have um, free moving electrons or it must have free moving ions. 
Now, because we're talking about ionic bonding, um, when we melt something or dissolve it in solution, an ionic compound like this, um, the ions are then free to move around, and that means they can conduct electricity. When they're in the solid state, like this here, you can see that they're not free to move around. They're held very tightly in a very tight, giant, uh, ionic structure, uh, and so therefore they won't conduct electricity. But um, there we go. There's the ionic bond. Make sure you get your equations right. You can write half equation correctly. Uh, make sure you know about the physical properties and crucially link them back to structure and bonding. It's very, very common for them to ask that. That's it. Bye-bye.